The title of this video, Salt and Sea Solution, is a small play on words. The obvious meaning is that the salt and sea is in trouble and needs some sort of solution to solve the problem. And the main problem is that the salt and sea is drying up. The other meaning of the word solution relates to the many plans that have been proposed to fix the declining water levels by diverting seawater into the Salton Sea. These plans, however, create a problem by making a solution of water and salt that is actually even more harmful than the current levels that are in the Salton Sea. There are three reasons why this video was made. The first is to raise awareness about climate change and to encourage individuals to take action to avoid catastrophic consequences. Secondly, to specifically encourage action to improve the condition of the Salton Sea. And three, to suggest an entirely new and bold plan to improve the Salton Sea. This new plan doesn't rely on a solution based on importing salt water to the Salton Sea. Instead, the plan is to increase rainfall, thus ultimately bringing life-saving fresh water to the Salton Sea. This diagram shows the various stages of the rain cycle. The first thing needed to produce rain is sufficient evaporation. Obviously, the current environment around the Salton Sea doesn't provide adequate evaporation to bring enough rain to the Salton Sea area or the areas that are surrounding it. The answer to increasing evaporation in the region is to bring seawater to a usually dry lake bed in Mexico called Laguna Salada. Laguna Salada is a perfect choice because its evaporation rate is naturally very high. One reason for this is that for long periods of the year, the air temperature is very, very hot. In fact, it can be as high as 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Since Laguna Salada is in Mexico, there will need to be an agreement between the United States and Mexico. The details, I'm sure, would be complex, but the potential overall benefit to both countries would hopefully lead to a comprehensive agreement. Flooding Laguna Salada with seawater from the Gulf of California shouldn't cause Mexico any problems, at least not any significant problems. Currently, it's essentially a wasteland with almost no inhabitants. The additional rain generated by the increased evaporation will fall on neighboring regions of Mexico as well as the United States to the north. Of course, exactly where and how much additional rain will fall is hard to know for sure. But given all of the arid land in the region, it would most likely fall on the land that most needed it in both the United States and Mexico. However, there is the possibility that the clouds produced by the increased evaporation will lead to rain falling as far away as the Colorado Basin. Now, this isn't necessarily a problem, though. Any additional water that flowed into the Colorado River could then be diverted to the Salton Sea, Mexico, and other areas that currently get water from the Colorado River. Getting seawater to Laguna Salada would not be a difficult engineering job. After all, the California Aqueduct is 444 miles long with numerous pumping stations, including one that has to pump massive amounts of water over the mountains that are almost 2,000 feet high. In comparison, the canal from the Gulf of California to Laguna Salada would be at sea level, so no pumping stations would be required, and the total canal would be only 65 miles long. In fact, 40 of those miles would include the existing Coyote Canal. This already existing canal would only need some additional dredging and widening. Of the many plans to save the Salton Sea, this would be the least expensive because the canal would end at the nearby Laguna Salada and require no underground tunnels, no pumping stations, and no extensive salt remediation efforts. One contractor's estimate for just a canal from the Sea of Cortez to Laguna Salada puts the cost at only $102 million. This is a graphic representation of the prevailing winds in the Laguna Salada area. The graph shows that a majority of the time, especially in the warmer months, the wind blows towards the greater Salton Sea area. Playa is a name for flat and dried up land that especially occurs in a desert basin. 
There are enormous areas of this playa around the Salton Sea, and it's growing larger every year. This doesn't just represent a wasteland, it's actually a serious health hazard. This playa isn't just dirt. It also contains enough arsenic, lead, pesticides, and other toxins to qualify for disposal in a toxic waste dump. So, especially when there are strong winds, toxic dust storms are created that threaten the young, the old, and those with respiratory problems. There are already several plans for controlling this dust health hazard. However, all of these plans require a lot of costly construction and would be difficult to apply to the entire area that needs dust suppression. However, if rain could be brought to the area on a regular basis, the dust problem could be easily solved. The key to making this plan work is at least partially shown in this graph. The graph shows that a rise in air temperature of only 1 degree Fahrenheit will increase evaporation by 4%. Now it's difficult to raise the air temperature, but what if we could raise the water temperature? That, I believe, is the key to making this plan work. The Laguna Salada area is already almost perfect for maximum natural evaporation, but with a little help, it could produce even more water vapor. That help with evaporation could come from geothermal energy. Now, there are already several geothermal energy plants at the south end of the Salton Sea. These plants harness the heat from magma deep in the earth to produce electricity. There are no geothermal plants yet in the nearby Laguna Salada area, but test drilling in the area has confirmed that a reservoir of magma is under the area that could be tapped. Instead of building expensive geothermal electrical plants, geothermal energy could be used directly to heat the waters of Laguna Salada. An example of this heat source already occurs in a number of places in the deep oceans. It's called a hydrothermal ocean vent. The temperature at these vents can reach as high as 867 degrees Fahrenheit. The results from test wells at Laguna Salada show that temperatures up to 187 degrees centigrade, that's 368 degrees Fahrenheit, are available. This diagram shows that two types of wells would be necessary to create a cycle of water heating and then replenishment. First, geothermal wells would tap super hot groundwater and allow it to rise to the bottom of the lake. The other wells would allow warm lake water to drain back underground to replenish the groundwater and allow it to be superheated by the magma reservoir. The more geothermal wells that were drilled, the more Laguna Salada would heat up and thus increase the evaporation rate dramatically. Once water vapor is in the air, the final stage is to get the vapor to condense into rain. This typically happens as clouds loaded with water vapor rise and cool when they go over mountains. In the Salton Sea area, there are the Chocolate Mountains, which rise up to about 3,000 feet, the Cottonwood Mountains up to 4,000 feet, and the Santa Rosa Mountains that rise to a little over 6,000 feet. Rain in any of these mountain ranges would drain into the Salton Sea Basin. In addition to the advantages of bringing water to arid regions of the southwest, the continual flow of water into Laguna Salada to keep up with its enhanced evaporation will help remove water from the ocean and thus play at least a small part in slowing sea level rise as the result of global warming. In conclusion, I hope this video will challenge experts in many fields to further explore the possibilities of this project and inspire those concerned about the environment to get more involved.